Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and it's time for another edition of Breaking News. Today is Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. And as always, we're going to be giving you some of the top stories of the day that fit, fit exactly what the Bible says our world is going to be like at the time of the end, the end of this present age. Now, I also want to recommend, if you haven't done it yet, to watch the second program we do each day called Your Bible Questions Answered, where we take a, sp a specific question in Scripture that you ask, and we uh, develop it. And the one we're going to do today about is about the knowledge of God and understanding God. We get a lot of questions along that line. Why, why can't we can't we understand certain things that God does? Why? And we're going to talk about that. It's the doctrine of, it's called the incomprehensibility of God. Not that we can't understand him, but we can't understand everything about him. It's important for us to know that. Also, too, I want to thank you for hanging in there and watching Breaking News. Uh, we got a comment yesterday, and I appreciate that from one of the uh, uh, viewers, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie, talking about how uh, I've been shadow banned, and it's getting more and more difficult every day to watch this program on YouTube. And we know that. We've had that problem from the beginning. And uh, when we see a, a real drop in the number of people watching, we know people aren't getting the word that we're we're doing this. Just to remind you, I'm doing this every morning, every day. Usually, I, yesterday I kind of slept in, but uh, before six by around six o'clock Pacific time, or before it should be or shortly thereafter, the breaking news should be ready for you. So again, uh, thank you for hanging in there. And uh, we're excited about what's going on. Uh, Romans 1.18 is going to be our key verse today. We're going to start with it and end with it with our various stories. It says this, For the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of human beings, namely the ones who are holding down the truth, holding back the truth, holding it down in unrighteousness, suppressing the truth. And it's interesting, Romans 1.18 talks about God's wrath goes against people who actively suppress the truth of God from getting out. So fascinating. So anyway, let's look at the headlines. Headline number one, another war could be coming to the Middle East. This is by a man named Daniel Greenfield. And this is, this is a different one, one we haven't even heard of yet. But we have to appreciate this in light of what's going on with Israel, with the, the nations around it, because... The Middle East, as we know, is always going to be a, a tinderbox, always going to be something where war can erupt any time. Uh, here's the headline or the story. Do not try Egypt or threaten its brothers. Currently, everyone in D.C. is once again busy pretending that the only reason, the only reason there's violence in the region is Israel, except that Iran and Pakistan are shelling each other's territory. Do you know that? They're shelling back and forth. The Taliban and Iran are back to threatening each other. And here is a potential military conflict you didn't see coming. And basically, Egypt will not allow any threat to Somalia. The president, al-Sisi, said on Sunday that Ethiopia, after Ethiopia would consider recognizing an independent claim by Somaliland and a deal that would give access to a seaport, there's a potential military conflict there. So the Middle East is full of military conflicts. It always has been, but it's been ramping up in recent years. And so the bottom line is this. The Middle East is never at peace, but Israel's always at the center of it, but it's certainly not alone. And scripture tells us that even when the final Antichrist rules, there will still be wars. Remember, Jesus talked about this when asked about the time of the end. And listen to what he said. This is Matthew 24, 4 to 8. Don't let anyone fool you. Many will come and claim to be me. They will say they are the Messiah and will fool many people. So you got false Christ, false prophets. Then he said this, specifically about the time of the end. You will soon hear about wars and threats of war, but don't be afraid. These things will have to happen first, but this isn't the end. Nations and kingdoms will go to war with each other. People will starve to death. That's famines. And in some places, there'll be earthquakes. But this is just the beginning of troubles. All right, so... Again, when Israel is blamed, what we have here is the ignoring of reality because there's wars and fighting all around in the Middle East. It's a tinderbox, like we said. But unbelief is never satisfied. Unbelief is always ignoring reality. Remember when uh, Jesus said uh, John the Baptist came. He didn't come eating and drinking. You say he uh, you know, has a demon. Son of man comes. Jesus comes and he feasts with the people. And, and they said, well, he's a drunkard, you know, and, uh, you know, a glutton. And so unbelief is never satisfied. So here's what we have. We have wars going on, uh, potential wars in various parts of the Middle East, but Israel seems to be the only problem that people seem to point out. And we're not surprised by that. 
And like we've talked about here, this could lead what's going on here, the conflagration to a larger war. Now, speaking of ignoring reality, that leads us to our second story. We are not at war. This is the Pentagon downplaying risk amid new strikes on the Houthis. Our aim remains to de-escalate tensions and restore stability in the Red Sea, Pentagon spokesman said during a January 23 press briefing. The United States and other international partners conduct several military strikes have conducted against Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen on January 22nd. The attacks targeted an underground storage site and missile and air surveillance capabilities, according to the Pentagon spokesman. Again, our aim remains to de-escalate tensions and restore st stability in the Red Sea, General Ryder said. These strikes were precise, proportionate, and intended to further disrupt and degrade the capabilities of the Houthis who have been using uh, to these capabilities to threaten global trade and the lives of in innocent mariners, all right, because what they're doing with the shipping lane in the Red Sea. Now, that's the, the ninth strike has been unilateral, well, had their unilateral ninth strike was made by the U.S. The previous ones was support with U.S. and Britain, uh, conducted by U.S. and Britain, was support by Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands. Well, the point is, they're... Um, they're striking these people down in Yemen, this this very poor backward country, the Houthis, but they're not getting at the head of the snake, and that's Iran. They're, they're doing nothing with Iran, and what is Iran doing? We've been documenting this, using the Houthis to bomb the shipping lanes in the Red Sea to Israeli port city of Elat. They're using Hezbollah in the Lebanon, that is Iran, to, um, you know, cause people, there's, you know, Dozens of towns and areas there where people can't go back to their homes. We've got what's going on in Gaza, et cetera, et cetera. But they're not even, they're not dealing with the head of the snake, the issue. They're not dealing with reality. And so ignoring reality. Now, speaking again of ignoring reality, this one will make you, I don't know what, how to even explain it. It'd make you sick. But this is what's going on in the world. This is from the UK. Headline number three, a radical UK trans lobbyist demands school stop calling pupils boys and girls. This is from Modernity News, Steve Watson, and also from Zero Hedge, this story. An extreme trans lobbyist group is pressuring schools in the UK to stop calling pupils boys and girls, and to use the pronoun they instead of he and she in an effort to remove any unnecessarily gendered language from the classroom. This in the UK Daily Mail it reports that the radical LBGTQ plus Stonewall charity is asking hundreds of schools and nurseries for children as young as two years of age to change their policies after signing up to its champions, quote unquote, scheme, its champion scheme. Yeah, the, the group also wants to see gender neutral bathrooms installed, having boys and girls wear the exact same uniforms. Report also notes that children are offered rewards. Get this. Children are offered rewards they comply with not using gendered language at school. All right, it seems that Jesus was anticipating this day in Matthew 19, 1 to 6. Remember when he got the question asked about divorce? He made the point that God did what? He made them male and female in the beginning. There's only two sexes. There's male and female. There's not a third sex. You either have double X chromosomes, it's female or XY chromosomes. Now, somebody always says, well, there's a few exceptions to that. Yeah, but this is the general rule, okay? And Jesus is pointing out that's how God made them. And so basically what we're doing, we're ignoring reality that there are males, there are females. Like we've said before, it, it is amazing, isn't it? Uh, my wife and I, we used to, we're members of the Wild Animal Park in San Diego. Every time we go there, uh, we, we do these guided tours behind the scenes. And the guide always says, well, here's the male gorilla, the female gorilla. Here's the male lion, the female lion. Here's the male elephant, the female elephant. They, they seem to only know of two sexes there in the animal kingdom. But when it comes to human beings, it seems it's, you know, it's up for grabs. Anyway, ignoring reality. Now, believe it or not, there was a recent poll in Israel during this very difficult time from the Israelis that said they actually support Joe Biden over Donald Trump. In other words, they like Biden to win re-election. I kid you not. Well, finally, some of them, even the mainstream over there, are starting to get it that Biden is not on their side. There's one an analyst from these, and all these you know, news sites, all these TV channels are leftists. This one Channel 13 news analyst criticized the plan put by Joe Biden for ending the war because he said it's only getting more and more lucrative for Hamas, the various offers that are made. No kidding. He says Hamas believes time is on their side. The more time passes, the more favorable the offers become for them. 
What is the advantage of here for them? It's not from disappearing, just waiting it out, because the longer they wait, the more lucrative the deal will be. And it, he said, I will call this a surrender agreement because we have not achieved the goals of war. And from Hamas, this is a game. Uh, he argues the war is not being managed correctly and it's not being managed with ultimatums. So we have not recovered the hostages as we should have. And he goes on against Biden. As for the rest of Biden's dreams, we need to remember that the Palestinian Authority, that's the PA, remember these moderate ones, educates its children for terrorism and jihad. That's what they teach in school. That's what interests them. And he says, uh, they want to take our land. They want to get rid of the Jews. I don't see them ma managing to make a change. If Biden succeeds in his mission, this is what's going to happen. Well, duh, you know, this is what they've been from the beginning. Again, ignoring reality, suppressing the truth. And finally, Hamas is said to reject an Israeli offer of a two-month pause. I don't know if you heard about that. A two-month pause in the war for the release of the hostages. Now, Egypt and Qatar are trying to negotiate this. The Hamas leaders have, you know, supposedly they would be given safe passage out of Gaza. Uh, the hostages would be released and uh, there'd be also some of these terrorists released from the Israeli prisons. And Hamas is holding the line, said, no, no, it's not. We don't do it in a phased thing. You have to quit entirely. You have to leave entirely. And then until you do that, we will still be fighting. So, um, again, there's no peace, no realization of what's really going on here the blind leading the blind. We are not surprised by this in the last days. Now, let me again emphasize what I did at the beginning. Romans 1.18, uh, one translation is God anger, God's anger is revealed from heaven against every ungodly and immoral thing people do as they try to suppress the truth by their immoral living. All right, here's the key, and this is something I learned long ago uh, when I was you know, studying the Bible in Bible school, and I've never forgotten this. Romans 1.18 says unbelief is not only um, you know un unrighteous, it's actively, willingly, knowingly suppressing the truth, trying to keep the truth from coming out. And basically, our Bible teacher said, I love his illustration, it's like uh, unbelief is standing on truth, and truth is trying to get up and say, hey, this is what's going on, but they're actively, willingly, and knowingly not allowing truth to come out because they don't want to hear the truth. They can't handle the truth. And so the bottom line is the uh, this word here in, in Greek that's used in Romans 1.18 has the idea of actually in a, sometimes in a physical sense. Remember the story in Luke chapter 4 that people tried to physically keep Jesus from leaving there when he's in Nazareth, and they wanted to throw him over the, the side of the hill there? Well, same words here. They, they're suppressing him from from leaving well the world that we live in today is suppressing us from the truth of god they're actively willingly doing it but the wrath of god is being revealed at the time they're doing this because god is going to judge them now there's temporary judgments and there's an ultimate judgment but please realize this that we live in a world where truth is being suppressed wherever we look wherever we go that's why what we do here is at the end of the day ask the question what does the bible say what does the scripture say about X, Y, Z? We're going to talk about the knowledge of God today in our second program in that. So anyway, thank you again for hanging in there. I know it's difficult. Uh, I remember when we first started our uh, YouTube channel, my daughter says, Dad, I don't know how anybody's going to find find this channel, the way they've got it labeled here. And I thank God that we've had almost um, about 1.9 million views since uh, we started in May, and I'm thankful for that. But uh, we know it's getting suppressed but we're going to keep going through and keep uh, keep doing it. Uh, we're going to stay the course. And thank you for staying the course with us. Okay, I'm Don Stewart again. Thanks for watching. See you later today on Your Bible Questions Answered. Until then, may the Lord richly, richly bless you.